This is video 4 on the basic operation with your Medmon E300 corneal topographer. You will note that your database is along the left hand side. All patient information will be stored here. Under patient name case initial A we can click on that patient name and bring up the main patient window. We also note that there's a plus sign next to the patient name which indicates that there must be information inside that file. You can open up the patient file by clicking once on the plus sign or double clicking on the patient name. In opening up the file we can see that there is one right topography inside that file. If you click on that topography it will be dropped on the main active window here. Once we do that, you can analyze these topographies a number of different ways. And the first way we might do so is to look at the SIMK readings. This is our keratometry readings as determined by your Medmont topographer. In this case, the flat K is 42.2, steep K 43.6. The flat K is along axis 1, steep K at axis 91. We can also see that this cornea has 1.4 diopters of corneal astigmatism. Next, we could click our cursor in the center of the topography and determine the radius of curvature at that point, in this case 42.9. We could click our cursor at any point on the map and determine the curvature at that point, in this case 43.5, just inferior of the apex and where the cursor has been clicked, we're 1.30 millimeters away from the center of the topography. The center of the topography would be the visual axis. This would be the point the patient is fixating at the moment the map is taken. We could look at the 3 millimeter, 5 millimeter, and 7 millimeter white rings and the pupil, which is in black here. We can use either the pupil or the rings to determine the position, shape, or size of any anomalies in relationship with the visual axis, with the pupil, or to a certain diameter away from the apex. Next, we could look at the eccentricity value here. Eccentricity is a measure of the rate of corneal flattening of the eye from the apex to the periphery, how high is that rate of change? The higher the eccentricity, the flatter the cornea becomes as you move toward the apex, in the, or move toward the periphery. In this case, from the center, taking this white axis line, observe the graph down below. Along the horizontal meridian, we go from steepest curvature in the center to pl flattest curvature toward the periphery. 0.86 is the measured eccentricity. Now change your axis line to the vertical meridian and notice there's very little rate of change from center to periphery along the steep meridian as compared to the flat meridian. That gives us a much lower eccentricity value. We will focus on eccentricity later in the video series to better understand what this tells us about the eye shape and how it can help us in terms of contact lenses. Next we could look at the scale range along the left hand side. Notice the topographer is showing us the flattest it can read is 35.23 diopters here, steepest it can read is 43.61 diopters here. The scale is set for a normalized scale range, meaning the topographer will show from the steepest to the flattest that can be read on the selected maps along this left hand side. If you select a topography that has much steeper curvature or much greater range of curvature, the scale will adjust for each individual patient eye. Normalized scale is the best way to interpret maps to get the best definition on each individual eye. You can also click on this down arrow and select from any one of the absolute scales. For instance, we could select the standard power scale 
which changes the scale range to 35 diopters up to 50 diopters. Now we have a 15 diopter scale range that's absolute, absolute meaning it will always be from 50 to 35. And you can determine where that patient falls within that scale. The redder the colors of the map, the steeper the corneal topography, the bluer or colder the colors are, the flatter the topography. In this case, we have green contours near the center. This is a pretty median cornea. But notice in absolute, you lose a lot of definition that the normalized scale would provide. So let's go back to normalized scale and use that as our default for all maps that we analyze. This concludes the basic section on your Medmont E300 corneal topographer.